Video games are usually seen as a hobby, something to pass the time. And with over 3 billion hours around the world spent playing games every week, that sure is a lot of time. But now scientists are realizing the energy that people put into games can be co-opted in the name of scientific progress. This trend is part of the citizen science movement, which invites people of all backgrounds to contribute to scientific problem solving without the years of intense education. And games are right at the heart. One of the major players in citizen science is Massively Multiplayer Online Science, or MMOS for short. Set up by Attila Zantner and Bernard Ravaz, the goal of MMOS, as Attila reveals, is to pair game makers and scientists. The big challenge that citizen science faces is how to keep us engaged in the long term. So with a friend of mine, we came up with the idea of taking these scientific tasks and injecting, the, injecting them into already existing major video games as a seamless gaming experience. This gamification of science allows labor-intensive research tasks to be done by gamers. The hands-on approach of gaming means that a player doesn't need to understand those tricky scientific theories behind the puzzle. Gamers can simply do what they do best, play. MMOS's first major campaign is Project Discovery, which aims to assist the Human Protein Atlas, a Swedish research team cataloging proteins in both normal and cancerous tissue. The project is built into the world of EVE Online, a science fiction game that has a player base of half a million. And Project Discovery fits neatly into EVE's universe. Gamers can take a break from a hard day's trading, mining and dogfighting to play a game within a game. That game in question is built around simple pattern recognition and players are duly rewarded in-game for their hard work. For this activity, players are rewarded by ISK, which is the in-game currency, and by analysis credits, which they can spend on stuff like cool virtual lab codes. The project has been a huge success, with over 400,000 submissions from players on its first day alone. Some people have got so involved that they've logged sessions lasting over 15 hours. And through their hard work, gamers are aiding the development of new cancer-related drugs. But Project Discovery is not the first of its kind. One of the forerunners of citizen science is Foldit, which was released back in 2008. Developed at the University of Washington in Seattle, Foldit is an online puzzle game about protein folding. The simple objective of the game is to fold the structures of selected proteins with the highest scoring solutions getting analyzed by researchers. The developers used gamification to attract as many people as possible to the cause of protein folding. And it has clearly worked. In one three-week challenge, Foldit gamers produced a near-exact model for a protein whose structure had eluded scientists for more than a decade. More recently, the Danish research group Science at Home have released Quantum Moves, a game where players have to manipulate and move atoms. Gamers can contribute towards building a real quantum computer without the need for a degree in quantum mechanics. And project leader Jacob Sherson believes quantum moves will use citizen science in radical new ways. In our game, you have to react quickly to, uh, and use your intuition to find new solutions. And we think that this uses completely different cognitive skills compared to the pattern recognition skills that have been used so far. Quantum Moves relies on players' innate ingenuity rather than textbook knowledge. And it must be doing something right, as the game has been played over 500,000 times by 10,000 players from around the world. Finally, gamification of science is also being used by scientists to help map the brain. This is iWire, a 3D puzzle game that helps us to understand how our brains work. 
It's one of the world's largest citizen science projects. The game challenges players to solve 3D puzzles in order to chart new branches of neuron activity. Each player is given a cube and has to map any neuron branches by colouring inside the grey outlines. It may sound like a simple task, and it is, but iWire is helping researchers discover how neurons process vital information. The game has even been expanded into a VR experience, Brain VR. iWire is a fantastic example of the successes of citizen science with nearly a quarter of a million people playing worldwide. The past few years have seen an explosion in popularity for citizen science projects. MMOS, for example, have already had success with EVE Online and Project Discovery, but as Attila reveals, they have more high-profile projects in mind. We also announced our cooperation with Gearbox, uh, the big US game developer company who are the creators of Battleborn and Borderlands series, amongst others. And in the meantime, we also realized that by using our platform, we can extend our scope beyond games. The idea that games and gamers can contribute towards real-life research is becoming a reality. Through gamification, even the most laborious research tasks can engage players to get involved in the name of human progress. And with the amount of support behind these projects, the future is looking good for citizen science. <laughs>